we call him Michael now to say a few words. On behalf of the Drone Community Development, thank you all very much for coming today. Um, it's absolutely fantastic to have something like a museum open in a place like the Drone because the cultural significance, the education it provides and the enhancement to local tourism and the enjoyment it provides for people. So it's great to be able to mark a day like this with an event like this. And again, thank you for coming. Especially Mine Historical, who did so much work here, and Stephen today, who did so much work as well. Uh, we also need to note that this being Heritage Week and European Year of Heritage and Culture, we have been very fortunate to receive a grant from the Heritage Council to pay for uh, provision of an architectural conservation report. This building itself is a listed building. It was built around 1875, and it was a bank for 100 years before we were finally uh, able to buy it with funding provided by the Dorn Town Council. So I pass you back to Val. Thank you very yeah. much, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> so just a couple of words about Mokenia Historical Society. We're a very small local historical society and we're going since about 2009 and we've produced a historical calendar every year and the remains of 2018 are there, so please take a copy away with you. You're very welcome. We also have a year of a Father Paddy lecture, <coughs> Father Paddy Gallagher lecture. And that Father Paddy Gallagher, most of you know, was a native of a parish and an, emin an eminent historian in his own right. And his work uh, between, uh, uh, between the uh, Drowas and the Urn, where the Drowas and the Urn meet the, the sea. sea. It's the correct name. His book remains to this day the definitive work of the parish. So we're, we do that every year in commemoration of Father Paddy. Uh, we also did a commemoration on the First World War uh, and those in Bordeaux who were killed in the First World War. The names we had at the time, there's a commemoration plaque inside in the vault and um, that's going to be updated, I think, later in the year because uh, we, nobody had all the names at the time. Uh, but I suppose, and last year, last year we had a big commemoration on the 60 years since the train left Bordeaux. But this year, I suppose, is our biggest effort to date, and it's the opening of the museum uh, in conjunction with Bordeaux Community Development Group, who donated the space in the vault. Uh, the, the building was bought from the bank. The bank left the vaults, but left no money. <laughs> and uh, we put this vault to good use. So uh, on behalf of Michael, Denise, Brian, Felicity, Val, Martina, Catherine, Mark, Patricia, John, Jerry, Michael Walsh, Oliver, Anne-Marie, Pam, and Joe, RIP, who's been replaced by Mary. Uh, that's the society as such. We're always looking for new members, but again, thank you very much for coming. And as I say, it is a community event, and we're going to have more of these. And really what it is, is preserving our heritage. It's um, a community experience, but it's also a visitor experience. And you won't believe it, but we've had over 1,200 people through the building to see the museum since the 23rd of June when we opened. Nice. So the good thing about that is that we're all here and then this was an enhanced experience for them. So we're delighted about that. Yeah. So we want to thank everybody who helped us and loaned, particularly Ballyshannon District Museum. They were very, um, they were the experts of going five years and they were able to guide us and give us a lot of stuff and a lot of help. So we want to thank those. There are a whole load of people we want to thank and we will do a list of merit, but I'm not able to go through them today. So, um, right, so now, great, great delight in welcoming uh, Declan O'Carroll, native of Bundorn, retired Colonel of the Irish Army, author and historian in his own right, and past president of Donegal Historical Society, uh, to do the official opening. Thank you, thank you, Val. I'm, I must say I'm delighted to be here in front of such a, a large, a large audience. But I would have to say that when I got the phone call from Val during the week, uh, she was a bit, li little bit disingenuous. She said, "Are you coming up to the to the opening?" <laughs> and I, said, I said, "Well, I probably will." I said, "I, I, I had received an invitation to three different events in Bundoran." And I said, I probably will. But she didn't say anything to me that I was going to be doing the official opening. <laughs> so I only learned about that when I arrived here. Having, having said that, I think it's a wonderful initiative. It's great to see, to see the interest in local history. And in, in this county, there is a, a real reawakening of interest in local history, which is terribly, terribly important. 
I think we have, as you know, we'll c confirm, I think we have something like uh, 35 to 40 local historical societies within the county, and they're all beavering away, weaving the historical fabric of the county, and I think it's just marvellous. And this, this museum here will add to all of that, and you're all to be congratulated for the wonderful initiative. Um, I, as you know, as, as Val pointed out, I'm a, a native of the town, though I have I'm long gone, 50 years on, gone out of the town there. Now, although one thing I didn't lose, obviously, was my accent. <laughs> I still have the Bundoran accent no matter where I go. Uh, but when I arrived in town today, uh, um, when I arrived, Michael came up to me and he said, w welcome back or something like that. Welcome home. Welcome home. <laughs> and it reminded me of the last time I met Brian McNiff down the town. He says to me, when are you coming home? <laughs> <laughs> so that's unlikely to happen. But I did, I was in town about three o'clock. I went up to see the football pitch where I spent many days in my youth playing football with a lot of the Bundoran people, many, many now sadly passed. And I was delighted to see that there's a stand there and there's a, a, new, a new surface on the pitch and it looks, it looks really well. But I also went up to see my parents' grave in Ars Farna, close to where I, was, where I was born. And I just looked back down on the town from, from the graveyard and I was hit by a, a surge of nostalgia. Uh, I saw the fields that my father owned, which are now covered with caravans, and stretched right, right down to the railway line, across the, the railway line, down to the Bradog, and then met the fields that my grandfather owned. And I was struck by this real feeling of nostalgia that makes you feel that, you know, you're, you're, you're at home. And this, it's said, and I don't know who said this, but uh, a community without its history is like a man without his memory. And I feel that there is a correlation, a, certainly for me there's a personal correlation between nostalgia and local history. And I think it's terribly, terribly important that we continue to develop our interest in local history. And I look all around me, I'm standing here beside one of the, one of the most eminent authors in these parts, beside Una, who is Secretary of the Legal Historical Society, between, beside uh, Aidan and Anita, who have a, a vault of stuff in their place. And I just think it's wonderful that, that this has now all been coordinated. And that this little museum, to which I hope to contribute, is going to add to, to all of this. So I compliment the committee, uh, and it gives me great pleasure to open. Open. <laughs> open. <laughs> <laughs>